So we're here at the Low Web 2013, and yep. who are you? I'm Andy Grignan uh, with Ailey, brand so, new company. We just came out of Stealth today. Ailey, is it the first time you talk about the brand? Or? It is the first time we've talked about the brand. We've been operating on a Stealth name called uh, Quake Labs. Uh, and we have been telling anybody what we've been doing since we started the company. So this was the first time uh, we've shown anybody. So it looked really awesome. Yeah. Is it a system to create apps easily for everyone? Or is it not apps? What well, is it? Well, you have to watch the... So apps is a really overloaded word. And so we went out of our way to not call them apps because apps are traditionally viewed as code that runs on a tablet or on a phone directly. But ours it does, are, right? Well, ours are different. So when you create, when you play the cards with Ately, it's a very visual system, it's very easy. We're not assembling pieces of code that execute. What we're assembling actually is a little text file that lives in the sky. It's a JSON text file. And then the, the componentry that makes up that is native in this case. Uh, but those are all strung together. But we're not inventing new code. And that's, that's a big distinction. So when, when Apple says there's a million apps and Android says there's yep. a million apps, yep. the way I look at it, yep. and I don't know so much, but yep. lots of them are kind of like generated out of similar stuff. They are. And they are. so let's say, I don't know, 90% of them are kind of like clones of each other. Yes. Like yes. Uh, download an out. app with sounds of this right. guy, download an app with sounds of that guy, download, right. you know, right, stuff right, like right. that. Or here's a book that we've turned into an app, you know, yeah. or, you know, or something like that. And, and uh, I think that doesn't really do much good for the overall app ecosystem. I think what really people want is is to create custom experiences based on their own stuff. Do you want to see? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, this is the. Uh, let me uh, turn it around here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and make. So for us, this um, is the first prototype of the app we're showing, this right? Is the exact first. We just got off a stage where we did a live a live shot. The idea is that you can either start from something that's pre-made, something like a shared album. If you were a bride today, and you were trying to make a photo album from your wedding. You've got a person that's taking pictures, a photographer that maybe puts the photos on, on Flickr. Uh, you've got your friends who are taking selfies with the bride and putting them on Instagram. Right? You've got people tweeting about it. Uh, how, do you, uh, how do you take all of that data that exists on Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, all of it, allow you to add your own content and curate it and, and maybe add a background soundtrack while you're at it? How would you do that today? So You can't. And so we're giving that So you allow to people. people to create an app or not? No. You will create an experience. That's why we stay away from the app. You create a channel inside mm -hmm. Aitly. Correct. It has so, to run inside of Aitly. But you can, can you kind of like say, click here, it installs Aitly and yes. runs the channel yes. so, as a default kind so of thing. So the way after you create, let's say you've made your uh, your album uh, for your for your wedding, uh, you can create it. You get a, um, you actually get a domain name off of ours. So let's say you call it my wedding. You would get mywedding.aitly.com. It's a full URL that resolves to uh, Aitly. You can tweet it, Facebook it, whatever. We give you a landing page that's completely filled out. It looks like an app landing page. And we take, while you create, we take sne uh, uh, snapshots of the channel that you've made while you're making it. And then when you put it, when you publish it, mywedding.aitly.com has screenshots, just like an app would have. Uh, and then you have a, a button that says, check out my channel. It does the dance with the Apple App Store. You run it, and the channel's already there. So there's uh, wedding stuff. There's, uh, there's all kinds of kind of like anything. In, channel in, styles, or what do you call it? And this is, well, these are, those are, those are prepackaged ones, and, and the community can make these. This isn't just us. We're going to start things rolling with a couple. Uh, but what, what we start really is, is starting with cards. And cards uh, was this, this metaphor that we came up with. How do you allow people to do really powerful stuff without any programming at all. And it's this. You start with really big blocks like people or pictures. Um, you've got enhancements like I want a theme. Uh, I want the, the scene to look like this. Um, and I want data to come from any one of these sources. So it's, in the past, there's been some kind of like attempts at, at yes, generating like has. systems to make it easy for people who cannot program yes. to make apps, kind of. Right. And this is kind of in the sphere where you're trying to do this, this but differently. This is exactly this, but uh, we bring to the table 20 years of doing this ourselves and failing. We've tried a couple ways. I wrote Dashboard uh, back in Apple. Dashboard was our attempt at making uh, macOS accessible to regular people. You didn't have to know Objective-C, the programming language on macOS. You could do it with JavaScript and, and CSS and HTML. But we missed the mark because regular people still don't know how to do JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And you have to be a programmer. How do you turn it into a game? So check this out. This is our rule system. 
everything that can be created follows these rules, right? You have rules, you've got content, and you've got extras, things like I want a background audio track. And so what, what can we, you do with rules? Rules are things like um, I, I, in the morning do this, in the afternoon do that, you know, based on time, or it can be based on when I'm near my friends. One of the things I wanted to show at the web today was when Robert came over, right now, because we were running low on time, uh, it just kind of uh, put a big glow ring around Robert's face. But yeah. what I wanted to have happen was uh, the whole screen kind of flips around and it showed Robert's dossier on his most recent tweets because we pulled all of that data. And then when he walked away, it automatically went away. So I think there's a lot of power that rules allow you to do extras, you know, have video and, and, and quotes and Twitter. And, um, so, so you were part of a team that did the iPhone? Yes, we started it. And uh, beginning there was no apps? There was no Is apps. that also because you considered maybe that the Apple considered well, that it was not uh, there was some kind of reason for that? Yes, there was very much a reason for that. And, uh, you know, looking back at it, uh, it doesn't make sense by today's standards. But the reason why we didn't have apps was because we were petrified of developers ruining the phone experience. So if the idea, the awful idea was that you would be on a phone call talking to your friends, some app would do something stupid, and it would crash your phone and drop your phone call. Of course, who spends all the time on the phone nowadays? We all use our, our phones with apps. We're constantly checking new things, and it's completely flopped the other way. But I think that's an example of we had this preconceived notion as to how this stuff should work, and that wasn't right. But we changed. Apple changed. I had already left at that point to go start WebOS uh, with some friends over at Palm. But that how I, is that different, the WebOS? WebOS from Apple? Well, no, WebOS, WebOS was different in terms of... Uh, we took that metaphor from Dashboard, which was using JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and instead of having it be just a widget that ran inside of uh, your Mac, we extended that to the entire operating system. So now you wrote full-fledged apps uh, that look like any other native app, but they were just... Which Microsoft uh, is trying to do with Metro? And so is Google kind of? with Chrome. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's now uh, uh, Nokia, uh, 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 several people uh, have um, uh, Firefox OS, so they've all adopted that model. and. Mm -hmm. The model makes a lot of sense, I think, uh, but I think in the same breath, there's a need for having these really connected mobile experiences. There's a big difference, to me at least, my eye, when I look at uh, Flipboard, right? Flipboard is a gorgeous product, and it moves, and it just looks really connected, and, and there's lots of really fun data, and I didn't see that kind of expressiveness with a web app. Is that... Uh, GPU acceleration. Yes. Is that heterogeneous uh, programming? There is. Uh, I think it's. I think it's a couple of things, right? I think it's um, understanding. You have to have a deeper understanding in WebOS or in dashboard widgets or any of these other how the DOM works. You know, it's that underlying layer underneath the web page. How do you get the most efficient scroll of an infinite list? And in instance. Android, it's the uh, so virtual Java. machine. Yep, the JVM takes. And you have a lot to be good at that, otherwise the app doesn't. Uh, it's not very smooth. So, so Android has a really neat advantage in that. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility. They've made a, uh, a toolkit that allows that uh, or abstracts a lot of that complexity away. You still have to have some knowledge on a per device basis, which makes it really difficult, right? One of the biggest challenges Android developers complain about is I've got a screen that's, you know, five inches or four inches or two inches or eight inches, and you have to make an app that responds to all of those. And it's not just, you know, springing the screen all the way around, it's having a hit target for your finger, because when you just scrunch it all the way down, you know, you're, 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 you're trying to hit, you know, these really tiny hit targets. Uh, and on another phone, it might be this big button. Uh, and, and that's a really challenging design problem. They're probably going to get to a solution eventually, but oh, they, are, they are on the way. They're Everybody the way. is. Everybody Nobody is. is there yet. No. Not even Google or Microsoft. They're like just no. talking about it kind of. But you know what's interesting is with Ately, we've taken it, instead of buttons and boxes and photos and things like that, what we've done is intent-based development. What do, you, what do you really want? Right? When, when you set up a WordPress blog, a lot of people, the first thing they do is start playing around with the theme. They want it to look a certain way. I want 30-point Helvetica. I want this, that, or the other. You try it then on a phone, and it doesn't look so good. And so you go back to the drawing. What you really wanted to do was just write a blog. So how do we take that concept, abstract away all that design element, because the second uh, I, I, I give you that ability to point 30-point Helvetica on this, I can't run it on a watch. I can't run it on some glass. I can't do a lot of things with it. But I'll take care of that. As long as you play our blue scene cards, we'll So play your game. Put your content, yep. 
tr and, 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 and you'll try to have it, more and more and more yes. of these cards? Yes. Do you want to support every idea people will have, want to have away? Well, no, because inevitably when you make a platform that's meant for everybody, you're going to disappoint uh, a big chunk of people because, uh, because there are people that want to push the boundaries as they should. Uh, and it's a matter of where do you focus your resources. And it's a problem that's played out on iOS and Android and every other platform. A developer wants a very particular kind of functionality and it just doesn't make the cut. And you wouldn't be able to kind of like let third parties add functionality right. cards? So uh, all of these black cards in our system here, uh, these are all written in JavaScript and they live in our cloud in the sky. And so Instagram, for instance, uh, to hook in all of Instagram content, it's about 60 lines of JavaScript. And any developer, when we open up the SDK, is going to be able to make their stuff available through Ately. And they don't have to worry about things like uh, the front end, uh, what does the design look like, as long as you're, whatever it is you're doing, maybe there's a new photo sharing service we haven't even thought of yet. As long as they can take and write a little bit of JavaScript that they've already done, probably, and they can put out you know, a, a picture object, it can be used anywhere inside of Ately, or an audio object, or whatever it is you want to do. And so, so this is coming next year. This, you know, the, the, our focus is on getting this app in people's hands. Android? Not yet. Why not? Because we're Apple guys. Uh, we have, you have to look at your core experience, right? We understand iOS, we understand that approach of the, uh, of the iOS customer. Uh, we still have to get much better at Android on our own. But you'll get there very of soon. Of course, we can get there fairly quickly. In the same year. Everything's possible. Uh, uh, so uh, the packaging, is it possible to just click and have it released as an app? Well, that's not that, allowed by uh, Apple? Well, or? It's, uh, it's not necessarily an allowed because there are people doing something kind of similar, right? I mean, there are development environments um, that does, it presents an opportunity. It also prevents, uh, pre it presents a couple problems, right? So uh, the apps have to come from us, you know, for instance. So you make a thing, you make a channel, and then you say publish. Um, then we have to publish it to the Apple App Store under our developer brand. And maybe that's not a bad thing. You know, I haven't quite figured out my stance on that yet. We've certainly been asked what, what you just asked. Could people pay common. and have it in their that's name another, and stuff? Yeah, and yeah, pay and have a, their ads or whatever they want? Once you have that flexibility uh, to, to have that, anything's possible. And so now it matters on, we're a startup, man. We got six yeah. guys, eight guys. And, uh, and so we have to focus on what are the things that matter most. So uh, there's, there's, there's a bunch of fun, uh, like functionalities. I don't know how many, but mm. they, 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 how many? like. Oh, a whole bunch. But these whole are. Bunch. this is actually just our demo build for the web. And yeah. so we trimmed out a bunch of our cards just to yeah. keep it clean so that when I got up on stage, I could just do this and flick through a few cards. Yeah. In reality, we've got a lot more cards. And, and that becomes an interesting design problem when you start to say, let's say you grows to 2,000 cards, 5,000 cards. How yeah. do you find the cards you really want? And what happens as the APIs underneath them change? How do you people have the ability to play a card but not have their channel play. You know what I mean? But, so uh, but for example, if you take the, the Twitter, where does it go? Here, here, here? Well, so here. it's a data source, right? And, and, and then you would be able to customize it a little bit? Yeah. And, so, and these customizations, could you so add more stuff in, in the future if people want to try to have more functionality? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's the whole point of the system. Every little card that you see on here is a modular piece of code. The blue ones are native code. We write those and every time I change a blue card, I have to change the app through the Apple App Store. The black cards, though, are JavaScript and they live in our cloud. Those, I can roll and change those all day long. Uh, the rules cards are, can be kind of a mix if you wanted to incorporate a rule that worked maybe on your GPS or you know beacon support or things like that. Then we have to change. Do you release web apps? Uh, I mean, get people, so the subdomain yep. is on the web too. It's on the yep. browser. Ately.com is our homepage, our corporate homepage. Yeah. And then when you create a channel, you're like, hmm, I want to share this with people. We take the channel name, .ately.com. So that's a website. It's a website. And automatically kind of like it gets detected could right. be, if you're on a tablet we, it says download and yeah, run so it as an app. We, we give you a uh, well you have to download Ately so it does the yeah. dance with the Apple App Store. You download Ately but then when you run it the channel that brought you there in the first place is already there. So you don't have to go through the extra step of trying to download it. We know why you're there. Uh, and so we just try to That's That can work right now. Yes. Apple allows people to with have iOS deep 7, links with iOS in, 7 within and Android's had it for a little while, yeah. um, and, and Apple finally has that. And so uh, there's some trick there. One of the things I didn't get to show was, and I think it's a really key part of this, uh, is this televised button. And the televised button allows you to do a two-screen solution. So while you're playing these cards, because you know when I was on stage, I'm, I'm playing a bunch of cards, and then I hit preview to just kind of check it out and see what it looked like. 
When you have an Apple TV with this, when you hit televise, you're seeing a live view of your channel as you're making it. So when you play cards, you get to see that impact right away. Nice. Every time you play it, you see, oh, okay, I didn't really like that. I don't want nice. hashtag the web, I wanted Paris, or whatever it is. Chromecast? Um, not yet. You that, could? You could. It All could. right. Because that's cheap. So is Apple TV. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's but yeah, it's 25, less cheap. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I agree with the sentiment. I think um, ultimately where this goes is TV. And the reason why we call them channels is because uh, I think it makes for a really compelling story. I think there's something, when I look at my Roku, uh, and I've got all these channels from, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, Cracked or any of these other guys that have made these, these channels for Roku, why can't I have a thing that I just tune to that has, instead of, you know, Cracked, it's, it's my own videos or it's, it's uh, my own content. I make a TV channel all about me, right? So it shows my tweets and my YouTube videos and this. All these services are all put together in one gorgeous thing and it doesn't take a lot of work. It can be auto-curated for you based on what you do. I don't want to change your habits of I, I'm going to make you use 8 lead to tweet from now on. No, 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 no. People do what they're going to do. I'm not there to change that. I'm allowing them to have a different way to express themselves. So we were on stage launching this with Robert Scoble. Yes. So what do you do with him? What, so, what is he doing with this? Uh, so Robert has seen this idea since its inception. We're actually neighbors back in Half Moon Bay, uh, way back in the States. and. Uh, when I left, he and I started talking as part of um, the WebOS days, and so we got to know each other then. Uh, and, and so he's seen the germination of this idea from just like, what do you think? I'm thinking about this, and, and all the way through its, you know, the maturation into its, into its product today. Uh, and so it seemed really fitting that we would uh, unveil together. Uh, you know, to, to the world. So cool. And the web is cool. It's an awesome, awesome place. I love this place. 